What's up guys? Welcome back to the Fig Heel YouTube channel and today we're going to take a look at Heels Hauls. Stay tuned. guys it's my favorite time of the week weekly purchases everything i picked up this week i call it my heels hauls because i'm the heel and this is what i hauled this week and as usual it's brought to you by the ultimate wrestling figure checklist and a new one is on the way and it is bigger and better than ever trust me and we got some really cool people on board for it so stay tuned trust me on this one this is going to trump last year's, and you're absolutely going to dig it. So stay tuned for the news on the new Ultimate Wrestling Figure Checklist. It's a banger. But this week, I got some really cool things. Now, I've known about these for quite some time, and I have been waiting. These were initially supposed to drop in May. These are the official Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, Major Bendy's Referee Figures. Now, it's a three-pack. You can get them individually or as a three-pack, and there's three of them. All the same body, different heads. And the first figure here is TTD Wrestling. Big fan of TTD's work. I think he's absolutely deserving of a figure in this sense. Um, I think this is a great way to work in characters of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Put them on referee bodies. I think it's a wonderful thing. He's done a ton of work. And I mean, everything that you see in the Major Benny's line is designed by this guy. So this is like this is like giving back to him, paying homage to him, TTD Wrestling. And there's three refs, and this is the first one. The thing I like about it is that each ref is different. Now, right here you see them. All right. TTD, John and Knick and people I know there's some people that just don't get it but think about it okay the referees even if you're not a TTD fan even if you're not a fan of Knick or not a fan of John Cone doesn't matter everybody loves referee figures right now think about it this way you have every combination that you need of hairstyle you have Knick that's bald with a beard you have John Cone who's got hair no beard and you have TTD who is hair and beard I think it was a genius way to work the referee into the system and pay homage to the friends of theirs. So bravo to Matt and Brian on this idea or Knick, whoever's idea it was. It's great. Um, and I love that it's TTD and Knick. Great guys. Um, can't say, say anything more than nice things about them. So all figures are in the same pose. Now here's Knick, bald with the beard doing the signature Kinnick face uh, that he did in, in our photo when we first met for the first time at WrestleMania. Been talking to Kinnick for a long time. He's a New Jersey guy, but we live on opposite sides of the state, and it's kind of funny that we met in L.A. for the first time. Absolutely love this guy so freaking much. He's such a fun guy to talk to. Um, but, yeah, I, I, when he showed me he was getting a figure, I was like, dude, I need one no matter what. I'm absolutely getting it. And here it is. Uh, I love that they have the um, count hand, so you can actually make them do the pinfall, which I think is pretty cool. And John Cone, big collector of referee figures, and now he has his own figure. Not that he didn't have one before, because that is kind of supposed to be referee John. But anyways, very, very cool. Um, I love referee figures, so to have three more in my collection, this was a obvious purchase for me. Um, I'm not a Major Bendy's completist, but these, even if I said I'm never getting another Major Bendy, these were going to be must-haves. I love referee figures, and they knocked these out of the park, so bravo to you guys over at Major Bendy's. And yes, I mean, I'm close to a completist, but we'll be getting more. Anyways... They come with a card. It's got all three of them on it, which I think is pretty cool. When you order all three, you get three cards. 
And on the back, instead of a signature, it has one, two, three. And I can't wait to open these up to see if they have a signature on the back. Um, but I'm gonna do that on an unboxing. So stay tuned for that. And the rest of my purchases are from Ringside Collectibles. Now listen, your boy is a big Defining Moments fan. And I have been waiting for the Defining Moments line to come back. I've been saying it. Mattel is great at reviving lines. And I think it's absolutely incredible that we get four Defining Moments figures in one in this four pack. I will warn you, they are much smaller than the previous versions. I will show you. I'll grab one of each. So let's see. Let's grab Hogan. Put him down there. And we'll grab this taker. This is the original incarnation of the DMs. Down there. And we will compare them at the end. But the box they come in is absolutely awesome. It shows the four moments that they are depicting. The four stars on the side, the WWE, it's like a, it's like a belt, uh, I don't know, plate on the back, and the four guys on the side. But here's the part that I actually liked, but I, I, you guys know me, I am a uh, big fan of packaging. They put their names on the top, and I'm going to talk about these names very soon. The interesting thing about this is that it says Mankind, The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, Shawn Michaels, Brett Hitman Hart. And you'll notice that Hitman is one word. And that's not common for Mattel to do that. You'll see even on the actual figure, it's two words. So on the top, Hitman is one word. On the actual figure, it's two words. Now here it is, Brett the Hitman Hart. Very, very cool. All pink, pink shades, pleather jacket. Here he is on the side. See how small this is? Like, I can literally pinch it with my fingers. Um, Brett the Hitman Hart and Rowdy Roddy Piper were no strangers to each other. In fact, Hot Rod used to train in the infamous Hart Dungeon back when Brett was just a child. At um, WrestleMania 8, however, they would be opponents facing off against each other for the first time in the coveted Intercontinental, uh, Intercontinental Championship. Though the iconic Piper was a wily ring veteran... The hitman proved to be the craftier of the two, pinning Piper's elbows to the mat and showing why he's the Besser is, Besser was, and Besser ever will be. So this is for his match against Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Not exactly a defining moment for me, but I am happy to have this figure. Um, I do think the majority of the others, well, maybe half of them, are actual defining moments in the careers of the wrestlers. But pink on pink on pink we love to see it he's got the open hands interchangeable hands in there the only thing is that these boxes are super small it seems like he's very claustrophobic in there kind of crammed in there right um look at how much space the previous uh generation had and then the original incarnation had massive amounts of space so these are very 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 scaled down boxes i mean look take the actual shipper i can grip it with my entire hand uh and i'm not a very large man but i mean that just shows how small it is right now next up sean michaels pretty cool the one thing i'm noticing is i think the head looks very very big looks almost too big for that hat too big for the body um the body hair is great the uh entrance gear is absolutely phenomenal i love the texas heart very, very colorful, cool. There he is on the side, that classic picture. Um, at Royal Rumble 1997, in front of his home crowd at the Alamo Dome, Shawn Michaels wanted two things, revenge against Psycho Sid and the WWE Championship. A few months earlier, Sid attacked the Heartbreak, Kid, the Heartbreak Kid's mentor, Jose Lothario, and used the distraction to defeat Michaels for the title. Now, with his friends and family in attendance in a jam-packed crowd, HBK stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against the monster who once was his bodyguard, tuned up the band, and took Psycho Sid down with uh, took down Psycho Sid with sweet chin music, regaining the WWE Championship and continuing the boyhood dream. There's the picture. Again, would I call that a defining moment in Shawn Michaels' career? No. But this is a very cool 
figure. I love like the mirrors on the entrance gear. Um, obviously they're not real mirrors. They're kind of printed on there, but looks great. Fists on the figure, sea greps in the box. Very, very cool. Next, we have Cody Rhodes. Why do I have two? Ringside sent me a Cody. Um, and then I got my box in the mail. So I have two Cody's. I'm probably gonna open one. Truth be told, this was the figure I wanted the most. When Cody came out at Hell in a Cell and took off his jacket and showed off that torn pec, I was sold. I, I immediately said, I need that as an elite. I absolutely freaking need it. So cool, so unique, so different. And this, in my opinion, is a defining moment in Cody Rhodes' career. If you weren't on board with Cody Rhodes before this, when this happened, you said, okay, I get it. This guy is here for us. This guy is wrestling. And I was sold. I was absolutely sold. They nailed the bruise. I think they did great going all the way down the bicep onto the forearm. He's got the cowbell, the belt, interchangeable hands, the red and blue tights. They did do the printing on the face, but technically that's how his tattoo is. I get it. Um, I would prefer it wasn't on the face, but I understand why they're doing it. And there he is. Look at that. Tell me they didn't nail that figure. Scars are made at Hell in a Cell, but in 2022, Cody Rhodes took it to a new level. The prodigal son returned to fulfill his family's legacy, but to do so, he first had to defeat Seth freaking Rollins. First of all, I love that it says Seth freaking Rollins, and I want a Seth Rollins figure that says Seth freaking Rollins on the box. This gives me hope that we're going to get that. Prior to their match, the American Nightmare tore his pectoral muscle, but he wasn't going to let a little thing like a gruesome injury stand in his way. Though suffering through mind-shattering pain, Cody gutted his way through the match and defeated the Visionary in a career-defining performance. He knew that somewhere his father, the American Dream, was looking down and smiling with pride. Now, full disclosure, I have a degree in um, health exercise science, and when this happened, a lot of people were like, I can't believe they're letting him wrestle, blah, blah, blah. Let me just explain to you why it was okay for him to wrestle. He tore his pec, literally tore his pec, that at that point, there is no worse damage that can happen to the man. It, was it painful? Absolutely, I'm not saying he wasn't in pain, but um, kinesthetically, there was nothing worse that could happen to him because the pec was torn. So, he would be in pain, but it wouldn't damage him more. It wouldn't further his recovery. So I understand why they allowed him to. And uh, I gotta say, having known people who've torn their pecs and seen it happen, it is a painful injury. So I gotta give mad props to the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes for that. And last but not least, my absolute favorite in the set has got to be Mankind. Again, I really wanted this figure, but Mankind is a figure that I've not wanted for a year like Cody Rhodes, but that I've wanted for like 20 something years, okay? First off, is this the first Mattel figure with a little bit of blood? Now, it's not like blood and guts with Jazz wears, but the blood is on his lips. The tooth is in his nose. This looks just like Mick Foley after he was thrown off the cell. I feel like this is the figure I've been waiting for. And I don't want to say that to me this is figure of the year because it's way too early to tell, but this is probably going to be on my top 10 list. I absolutely freaking love this. The torn shirt on the biceps, the crooked tie, everything about this is everything I've wanted since this match. This match meant so much to me as a kid and now as an adult seeing this, they absolutely perfected it and were able to put it in figure form in a way that I didn't think was possible. There he is on the top before the Undertaker went up to throw him off. Perhaps no match in WWE history is more fabled than Mankind versus Undertaker inside Hell in a Cell at 1998's King of the Ring. Rather than enter the cell, Mankind scaled to the top and waited for his dark rival. The dead man met his sadistic opponent, opponent on the structure's roof and in a matter of moments threw him from the top and crashing into the announcer's table below. As God is my witness, he is broken in half, announced, announcer Jim Ross shouted in panic and disbelief. 
But if that wasn't enough, mankind returned to the cell, scaled back to the top, and was slammed through the roof, crashing hard down into the ring. It took a tombstone into a pile of thumbtacks to finally end the match and cement Mrs. Foley's baby boy as the hardcore icon. The only thing that would have made this more perfect is if we got Terry Funk's shoe as an accessory, but they're not gonna do that because if you look at these figures, the only accessories they're getting besides Cody with the cowbell is interchangeable hands. But let me just say, this is a beautiful, beautiful figure. Simplistic, yes, but well done. Far supersedes that, it is perfect. We get two interchangeable heads, one with a removable mask. So this is before the fall, this is after. Thank you, Mattel. This is everything I have wanted since I was a child. This, this bloody mouthed, tooth nosed, mankind, Mick Foley, whatever you wanna call him, is a chef's kiss. I absolutely love this figure. Thank you. All right, guys, I almost forgot. I said I would show the comparison of the different size boxes of the Defining Moments figures. Obviously, pretty much the same exact logo, slight differences. Obviously, the WWE logo changed on each one, a little bit of the molding on the belt, but the size is obvious. The original is super big. Scaled down a little bit in the middle, but super tiny on the most recent. Let's turn it to the side and show how the depth of each box has changed. And it's drastic, absolutely drastic for how much these have changed, but still happy to have the DMs back. Long live the defining moments. Now, last but not least, Ringside Collectibles is putting up, w I'm sorry, AEW chase figures for $49.99 each. I've tried a few, as I've told you, and I've gotten chases every time. I tried another one. Daniel Bryan, oh, Brian Danielson. And what did we get? The one of 5,000 unmatched series five, Brian Danielson, number 39 in the set, the all red trunks. If it wasn't 50 bucks, I probably wasn't gonna get this one. It's basically the same figure, just new tights deco. There he is on the side. Not too much going on with it. Says it's from November 17, 2021 in Norfolk, Virginia, but still very cool. And with that, I can close the book on Unmatched Series 5. I only need a couple more chase figures. Amazing. Didn't think I would get this close to completing them. But comment below. Let me know your favorite thing I picked up this week and your favorite thing you picked up this week. Hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Fig Heel. Pick up the ultimate wrestling figure checklist. Go to figheel.com or whatheel.com to join Whatnot at $15. I'm sorry, to get $15 off your first purchase. And if you are interested in getting the Defining Moments 4-pack, use code FIGHEEL to save 10% at checkout. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one, and we will see you next week. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Fig Heel. Pick up my book series on Amazon and my merchandise on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Fig Heel. Join my official sponsor, Whatnot, at WhatHeel.com and receive $15 off your first purchase.